All right. So now the, the previous diagram, as I mentioned, it is a simplified diagram. So now let's kind of build upon it, add more layers to it to understand a much more detailed and complex picture of the IC engine combustion process. So first you need to make sure that you have your fuel components, vaporization characteristics and physical properties. Well, why is that important? You need to understand that your fuel, right? For example, say you go to your petrol bank today, it is made up of thousands of species. What do I mean by species? Well, that basically refers to hydrocarbons like octane, alkenes, alkynes and benzenes, right? Uh, aromatics. So your fuel is made up of all of these components. So it is very important for you to understand what your fuel is made up of because each component will vaporize at its own rate, which is what you call as a distillation curve, right? So very similar to fractional distillation, right? You guys might have studied, uh, studied that concept. So basically in fractional distillation, different hydrocarbons settle down at different heights because of differences in their vaporization characteristics. The same concept applies to your ordinary fuel as well, right? So remember that the fuel that you take from one petrol bank is always going to be different from the fuel in the neighboring petrol bank. Maybe you, you, come, you come there some other time, it's going to be different. It's always going to be different. So understanding this differences and designing your fuel injection system accordingly is very important. <laughs> Okay, so need of yeah, sir, CFD is only take care of combustion or also the exhaust system as well. It can do pretty much everything. So from comp with computational fluid dynamics, you can design your intake system, which means if you have a turbocharged system, you can include that. Even before that, if you have exhaust gas recirculation, you can include that. You can simulate your IC engines, you can simulate the combustion, you can simulate the after treatment system all the way up to the tailpipe emissions problem is doing all of this is going to be very, very slow. Then on the injection side, there are so many parameters you need to worry. Like what should be my injection pressure? Because, uh, you know, that is a parameter that you need to set, right? What would you set it to be? What should be my nozzle configuration? Well, what do I mean by nozzle configuration? See, say you have an injector and you have to take the injector. So for example, if this is your engine and say that this is your piston bowl, okay? And this right here is your piston and I, I have my connecting rod here, say that you have a fuel injector. Now, would the fuel injector be placed like this? Or would the fuel injector be placed like this? How, what is the right way? Can anyone answer this question? How do I decide which way I want my injector to be placed? Right, so these are very practical questions that you can think about. The answer to, so the fuel doesn't impinge on the wall. Well, in this case, don't you think the fuel is directly going to impinge because this is the shortest distance? Isn't this, isn't the diagonal larger? Well, so that's the thing, right? So it is depends on a lot of factors, right? So if you think about it, the port design is something that you look, you try to optimize here. So one of the things that people do is, if uh, for direct injection engines, you know, the I thing is before the spark starts, your fuel needs to vaporize. How will the fuel vaporize? Well, if you hit the wall directly, that's it. You forget the vaporization. It's all going to be liquid fuel and your fuel, your engine will basically give a very big, uh, you know, uh, what's the word? Um, it's, it's, going to, it's going to generate a lot of smoke, right? It's going to generate a lot of smoke. So what should I do? Well, I need to reduce the impingement, which means when the spray comes in, I need to make sure that it does not impinge. That is not the only criteria, but my parcels get enough time to basically vaporize, right? Which means, yeah, this is, you can see that this is the longest path, but what I can tell you is in this type of configuration. So if you take the green injector, I can do a couple of things. What I can do is I can design my port, my intake port, to be something like this. So my intake port and the fuel injector are aligned at the same angle. So if I measure this angle theta, my injector is also aligned along the same angle. So what will happen is my fuel spray will come like this and because of the piston shape, it the air would force, the air would force the spray parcels to take this path as much as possible. There is still going to be some impingement, but your bulk of your spray is going to take this path. And that is where the bowl design is very important. And this will help you in atomizing the spray. 
right but uh, so this is what you call as a tumble port and this flow right this this rotation so you can see the you can see that the fuel sorry the air it has a rotation about the say the x axis where x is basically pointing normal to the screen so when you're looking at the screen x axis is pointing towards you right so this is basically tumble so tumble is basically flow about the x axis or y axis assuming z axis is basically the axis of the piston all right so this is again you can under you can see that the concepts are quite simple right but so far you know whenever i talk to someone no one knows what tumble flow is right but now i hopefully you know hopefully you can understand that it's a very simple design um, methodology that you can use or flow methodology that you can use to make sure that your fuel doesn't hit the wall directly <laughs>